FS Elite at Flight Sim Expo 2024 is proudly brought to you by Simbit Worlds A Pilot's Life Chapter 2. Check it out now on Sim Market and also on Contrail. Because yes, this works, right? Can you all hear me? Okay, thank you for the introduction. Indeed, I'm Hanna, one of the co-founders of ProSim, director. Um, really glad being here again. Thank you for FS Expo and FS Elite for giving us the opportunity to meet with everyone again. We met with a lot of familiar faces, but I've also spoken to a lot of people here today who don't know about HomeSim or ProSim. So I'm glad we have the opportunity to give a little voiceover with that. <coughs> Does that work? Yes. So what is HomeSim? HomeSim is the well-known ProSim software for your home simulator. We have been out here for around about 12 years. We have 3,000 uh, home users using our software. Um, and Okay, that goes automatic. So it's a complete avionics piece of software for multiple different aircraft types. It's for the 737 and GM Max and for the A320 CO and NEO. This doesn't go well, yes. So what our software offers to the home cockpit builder is a complete simulation of all aircraft systems. Uh, our package comes with a flight model that you install either into Lockheed Martin Prepared or Microsoft Flight Simulator. It defines the flight characteristics of the simulator. Um, and of course, hardware compatibility is a big thing. We are compatible with around about 20 vendors in this market. We have those drivers built into our software, and usually it's just clicking one checkbox in order to load the driver for Scalarkey, as you can see with our A320 there, or Flight Deck Solutions. Uh, apart from that, we also have an SDK for people who want to customize their own hardware and have it to talk to ProSim. Going back again to my previous slide, um, what is also important, in order to spread the system load in a simulator, our software is modular. So we have one main module that sits on the same computer where the simulator platform is. It would be Microsoft Flight Simulator or Lockheed Martin Prepared. And the other modules are spread over the different systems within the simulator. They all perform their own tasks and that assures a stutter-free functioning of the simulator. I'm glad I have a copy here. Yes. And what is also important, uh, our software in comparison to other software out there, it allows you to make all configurations in the software using graphical interfaces. So you would never have to manually edit configuration files in order to almost program how your simulator would work. All of that we take care of. So I spoke about the modules, I mentioned them already, so we go over them one by one. ProSim system is the most important module in your simulator. It sits on the same computer as where the simulator platform is and it performs the simulation of all aircraft systems. It also contains all the drivers uh, to the hardware uh, components that you can either hook on to your first computer or to the different computers. Second is the instructor station. You can either run that on a PC or on a tablet. It allows you to control your simulator, relocate to a different airport, change the weather, etc. ProSim Audio is the module that takes care of your cockpit sounds. It allows uh, to use multiple channels because you may want to have different speakers used for different sort of callouts. It also allows to operate an intercom functionality. It's basically the sound playback in the cockpit. The ProSim Hardware Connector allows you to uh, connect your cockpit hardware, so let's say your overhead panel or or your pedestal to any, uh, any uh, simulator in the network. It connects it to ProSim system again. ProSim display is the most visible module, obviously. Per physical monitor in your main instrument panel, you run one instance of ProSim display. You typically want to do that off of different computers in order to, to spread that load again. And then in ProSim display, you configure a screen to be a PFD or an ND or one of the standby instruments. And all of that, again, is done through graphical interfaces. ProSim CDU, it's a module you would run two times because most uh, cockpits have two simulator, two uh, CDUs. Uh, and the hardware CDU, again, is connected to those software instances. 
Here's an example of a uh, module of ProSim system. Again, this is where you configure all of your hardware, and this is the beating heart of your simulator. It connects to the platform and it connects to all the other ProSim modules. This is ProSim display. So, per physical monitor in your main instrument panel, you run one instance. You first then just have a blue screen. You select the display elements you want in there, the PFD, the ND, and then just with the mouse, you drag them to the right location. You roll your mouse wheel in order to make them bigger or smaller. And that is how you can easily save that setup and on the next boot, it will just come up as configured. What ProSum Display can also do is give you graphical 2D representations of certain cockpit panels. So let's say you don't have an overhead panel yet, you could mount a touchscreen monitor above your head, have ProSum Display display the overhead panel there, and then just with a uh, push on the touchscreen you can operate the overhead panel. Again, if you miss hardware like a standby instrument or a clock, also ProSum Display would display those in your main instrument panel so you can get started without having all the hardware ready. Also included is an instructor operating station, I mentioned it, your repositions, your fuel, your weights, all your settings you do in there. Now I would like to in, uh, invite my colleague Jeroen here, Jay, on stage, because he will go a little bit more in depth in uh, certain features that we have just now released or will be releasing in the, in the future. So Jeroen, please. Thank you. FSLE at Flight Sim Expo 2024 is proudly brought to you by Anybuilds. Check out their A300 right now from Microsoft Flight Simulator. Guys, we don't have sound on the second microphone. Um, so, for um, this next part, um, so first of all, my name is Jay. Um, I manage the uh, home, home sim side of, uh, of Brosim. And um, I'm here to talk a little bit about what my journey was from starting on a desktop PC with just a joystick to um, actually having a full-blown co uh, cockpit in my house, an A320 um, uh, software package with an A320 full hardware package as well. So uh, just a little bit of a background of how it started. So I started um, flight training in 2012 and I had a uh, desktop PC just with a joystick just to uh, try some procedures, use some, uh, some of the information I learned during the flight training. Um, once the flight training was finished, I was like, oh, it'd be nice to sort of advance that a little bit. Um, so I wanted to build an MIP, main, main instrument panel. Now, um, started soldering that all myself, uh, putting together all the lights, all the switches, but found it very difficult to actually get it interfaced properly with the simulator. Uh, that's when I first tried ProSim. I used the demo version just to see how it worked and actually found that that was so much easier and it saved me so much time. So with a click of a button, all of a sudden everything worked. It lit up like a Christmas tree and I was like, oh wow, it's actually working. It was mainly mesmerized by the fact that I actually soldered it, right? Um, but then also realized how easy it was to get it all set up. Um, so that was the first point where I thought, okay, now I need to move on from having just a desktop version of software to something more like an avionics suite. So that was the first sort of background bit where I started. Then came the hardware, so I wanted to buy a FMS. Now, that's normally plug and play. You plug it in, you assign it to the software and it works. But only with a software suite that can work with multiple different uh, hardware solutions that, that can be done. So that was the next sort of hurdle I had to overcome. Then obviously comes displays uh, as well. So everyone knows if you undock displays in, in a simulator, the performance goes down drastically. Now if with ProSim, you can use multiple PCs in a network and you just uh, have all the P uh, displays like Hannah just showed you and it makes it so much easier. So 
Um, it also relieves all the pressure of the main PC. So all the PCs have room to breathe. They have their own dedicated tasks. One PC runs the main computer, one PC runs the display. Another PC may be running the sound or the instructor station. So all the PCs have their own breathing space, which makes for a very smooth operation of your flight sim. Uh, the next thing is the performance. So um, the performance of the simulator, um, frame rates. I started using uh, three screens initially before I had the wraparound screen. And that takes its toll on your performance. So again, offloading all that uh, data onto other computers that work together in the same network is really, really helpful. Um, and uh, the sounds as well. So I think sounds are one of the most underestimated things in the cockpit build because having the sounds coming from the right place, like avionics fans coming from behind the screens, pack sounds coming from the rear, your APU sounds coming from the rear, uh, all that, that stuff coming, all the sound coming from the right places makes that it truly immersive. Um, you can't do that with just a desktop solution. You need a software piece like Prosim to make that work. Uh, another one is the instructor station. So um, the instructor station obviously does not only control the failures, you can reposition the aircraft, you can change the weather, you can do anything you need to do to quickly make changes to your simulator. So that's why you need ProSim um, or any like software suite just to make sure that everything works in the network together and make sure that everything runs nice and smooth and every time you start up that simulator everything is already there you don't want to be tinkering with different uh, software programs starting up in a certain sequence having to drag the screens around every time you start the sim you just press the button you turn on the simulator that's it right um going back to uh, some recent updates we've done to the 737 800 flight model so um, first one is a new exterior flight model. Some of you may have already seen it. Um, it's only just been released. So we've uh, completely overhauled our external visual for the 737 uh, flight model. The next one is the uh, sound set. So the engine sounds for the 737-800. Uh, SIM update 15 compatibility for NSFS. And the new Asobo ground handling uh, parameters are now integrated, which will also lay the foundation for future fighter and model updates coming for single engine taxing or single engine behavior. Um, also, continuous improvement to the flight modeling, which I'll just touch on just a little bit later on. Now, um, I'm going to talk about what's next. So, um, the first new feature I would really like to talk about is Atsol. Um, maybe a lot of you don't know what this is, so I'll very briefly give you a little overview. So, Atsol is a airborne traffic situation awareness. It basically uses um, ADSB data and it links it to the aircraft that you see on the, what you normally see on TCAS. So now you can not only see where that traffic is, you can see the direction of the traffic and you can see its call sign, which means you have an incredible situational awareness. Um, this feature proves how much we are on top of all the latest development because only 25 aircraft in the world currently run this software as a trial for Boeing and Airbus. But we already have it in our sims and it is already available on our A320s for our customers right now. Coming soon to home sim, uh, reworked single engine flight dynamics uh, for all models. Uh, we're currently in the later stages for the A220, and we'll see some of these improvements very soon to the A220 models. Electronic flight back, which I'm going to show you a, a screenshot for very soon. Uh, early stages of development, but progressing really, really nicely, and uh, will give you a lot of access to everything you need to set up and including uh, weight and balance and performance tools as well. Uh, new engine sounds for both the A320 and the 737 uh, 800 MAX. So um, that's all coming very soon as well. Uh, the last point uh, to mention here is the me uh, mean time between failures coming initially to the A320. Um, basically, this means that you, every uh, component obviously fails over its time in the aircraft and based on manufacturer data we now know how likely it is for a part to fail 
So what's going to happen when this uh, feature is activated in your Prosim iOS is that you can um, expect a failure of one of your components, but you don't know when. And you don't know which component, but you're going to have to deal with it. Get a QRA child, get some help, find it online. Whatever you do, you need to sort of try and fix it and make sure you land the aircraft safely, obviously. Um, you can also select what type of failures you want that to happen to. So it won't be uh, anything really complex if you don't want it to be. Uh, when you're done on the ground, you use the MCDU to call for maintenance on that specific part of the aircraft so that you're ready for your next flight again and then it's all fixed. But then you could have another failure in the next flight, who knows. Um, it's completely independent from the failures on the instructor station and it also means that um, failures that are not available for home sim users could still appear uh, whilst it's on the maintenance-based failures. So um, you won't be able to trigger them manually, but you might be able to um, get them through the flight based on the historical data of the failure. Um, lastly, I want to show you a screenshot of the EFB. Um, that's um, early access, so at the moment we are still developing it. There's still a lot more features to be added, but it gives you a bit of an idea of where we're going with this. Um, it's going to be quite extensive and it's going to have a lot of different features and it's going to be available for all clients, uh, all customers uh, in home sim and person. We uh, run a 10% discount um, for all non-commercial licenses. Uh, using this discount code behind me so you can scan the QR code should you wish to purchase. Um, if you're here today with us, uh, come and see us at our boot, you get 20% off instead. Uh, lastly, uh, our website's here and also QR code with links to all our social media, so be sure to follow us there. We'll uh, post some more updates and make sure that you um, uh, get updates on all the latest developments that we uh, will publish in the next couple of months. That's it. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, guys. Round of applause for Hannah and Jay.